It's a Friday night affair. Coach Lance Leipold and the Kansas Jayhawks, the team with the most returning production in all of college football. They welcome in Brett Bielema and the Illinois Fighting Illini at a beautiful David Booth Kansas Memorial Stadium on Friday night, 7.30 p.m. Eastern time on ESPN2. Kansas currently a three-point favorite. The total currently sitting at 56.5 over at BetUS. Kansas was 3-0 and against the spread as a home favorite in 2022. Uh, they did fail to cover last week as a 32.5 point favorite over Missouri State. Uh, Illinois failed to cover in a last-second win against Toledo last week, but the Illini were 3-0 and against the spread in their last three as a dog last season. Parker, I, I think the scariest thing for Illinois is that they could not get Toledo off the field. Uh, they won the game, but Toledo went 7-15 of on third down, uh, two of two on fourth down. They ran the ball 42 times on Illinois for 4.4 yards per carry. Like Kansas's running game might be licking their chops here. You break this one down for me. Yeah, that, that scariest stat that I had uh, circled on this one is last two, last week, uh, Illinois allowed 5.2 yards per carry, 2.92 yards after carry, four runs of 10 plus yards um, uh, there. And Kansas last week, again, against FCS competition, but just to start comparison, 6.2 yards per carry, 3.21 yards after contact and seven runs of 10 plus yards. Kansas will be explosive if you let them in the run game. So uh, Illinois absolutely has to shape that run defense up. I think we've talked about on the show how we were a little skeptical with Illinois losing Ryan Walters, losing those NFL guys, that run defense really seems to have taken a step back there. Um, uh, Jalen Daniels is supposed to be back this week. I, I'm really interested how introducing him and there not being film on him really messes with Illinois' ability to uh, limit explosives on defense. Quentin Skinner for Kansas had a 21.4 target share, 19.3 yards per uh, reception, and 3.85 yards per route run. Remember, four yards per route run over the course of a season is like godlike. So very productive from Skinner. It looks like Bean was able to find him, uh, and he's a pretty explosive option. One thing that I'm watching in this is um contested targets uh illinois forced 12 contested targets uh against toledo last week but they allowed completion on seven of them kansas not a lot of contested targets uh only three last week and really not a lot last season they want to create separation they want to scheme open guys have easy throws make you choose kind of the option game do i come up and defend daniels or do i stay back and and and, and try to contest the target uh and they want to put defenders in, in a conflicting position i think that versatility is really interesting if kansas can create separation here i think illinois defense is going to be on its skates um on the other side i'm really interested in whether you know kansas can disrupt altmeyer uh under pressure last week altmeyer was 37.5 percent completion uh 12.5 average depth of target on pressure drop back 6.7 on unpressured meaning anytime they tried to go deep he got pressured kansas dl is probably the weakest unit uh, on that team can they disrupt altmeyer and keep this offense away that's what i'm watching for now illinois had 10 penalties for 100 yards at home last week. Kansas, of course, continued to look like a well-coached football team. They only had three penalties. It was a 48-17 to 17 blowout over uh, Missouri State. Kyle, it, you know, Parker mentioned there, Jason Bean played the whole ball game uh, for Kansas. I would imagine, you know, Jalen Daniels, he's going to be the guy this week. That's what all the reports are. Uh, give me some thoughts here. I mean, we know Kansas is incredibly explosive. That Illinois defense looked completely different. We we know that they lost a bunch of guys to the NFL. They lost Ryan Walters, uh, but this is this does not look like the same Illinois team. What, what do you think, Kyle? I mean, I think first of all, uh, Kansas against Missouri State it, it means almost nothing here because you know Jason Bean playing is a pretty pretty big drop down from Jalen Daniels. Uh, Bean's a good backup. Jalen Daniels is a star, and um, you know obviously you can't take too much out of an FCS game anyway. So uh, don't don't make anything of that. I do think Kansas's offensive line is the most underrated unit here in this game. Uh, offensive line last year gave up 12 sacks, 5.3 yards per carry. So they were very solid. Uh, I think the matchup between that offensive line and the Illinois defensive line interests me the most of anything in this game because the Illinois defensive line still has some stars there. They should be very good. Uh, they didn't look as good as you would expect against Toledo. They, like you said, Toledo ran it for almost 200 yards in that game. Um, you know, Altmaier had to run it a lot for the offense. I assume they probably don't want him running quite as many times as he did in that game. Uh, fighting Illini weren't particularly impressive, and they were fortunate to beat Toledo in that game. Uh, Toledo's special teams let him down again. Uh, stop me if you heard that before. You know, that's <laughs> something that's been pretty common. Uh, to me, some sharp money has come in here on Illinois. Uh, this is... This line is right where I have it, so I don't have any edge on the side. 
I'm a slight lean to the over. The problem with taking the over in something like this is both teams are going to play so slowly. You're going to need some really good efficiency to get over this number. Uh, my lean would be over thinking that there will be enough explosive plays here. I I do want to toss in. So my early number on this uh, preseason number, whatever, was Illinois minus four and a half. Uh, I don't feel great about that now, obviously. And we don't have any picks on this game. If I had to lean a certain way, I guess I would go Kansas at home. But we've we've really been talking about this Kansas offense. Uh, Illinois does not win that game against Toledo last week if they had last year's offense. I think Altmeyer kind of added a new dimension. Uh, that late fourth down pass that he made was just awesome. So the offense looks a little different, and we we know last year Kansas's defense was not great. I I can't wait to watch this game on Friday night. I think this is going to be an absolute barn burner, um, but I, I would have to lean Kansas at home, especially Jalen Daniels coming back. Uh, so, yeah, no no official plays on this one. Let's move along. I think, game Gary, if you're, two. Gary, oh, if ahead, you're talking, oh, we're going. I messed up the transition. That's you're good. Still early you're good. Season. Go we're ahead. The, yeah, t- talking about the Illinois offense, the other note that I thought was really important is, like, Kansas' defense is obviously the limiting factor. Reggie Love, 3.5 yards after contact last week, uh, 5.2 yards per carry. That's an, that's a rushing game, frankly, that Illinois, like, last season, it was just Chase Brown, Chase Brown, Chase Brown. Um, yeah. And uh, and now they're going to have to get a little bit creative, but the Altmaier reggie Love combination is like very different than kind of what they've had in the past couple of years. If Kansas can't tackle at the point of contact and gives up yards after contact, we could see some, some very shootout kind of numbers from Illinois, Kansas here. Yes. Hey, Kyle, you, you kind of feel the same on this one. Yeah, I think that's there. There's potential for this one to be quite a bit higher than people expect. And a lot of fun, a lot of fun. Okay.